Let's talk about driving assists in Forza Motorsport. These are essential to get set up right, so you have a great driving experience. You don't want too many assists interfering with your driving, but also don't want to lose control of your car all the time by driving without any assists. I will give a detailed explanation on every single assist and provide you with recommendations which settings to use. Because I have taught my girlfriend, who had never held a controller in her life, how to play Forza, I have a very good idea which assists are good to use as a beginner and in which order to reduce them bit by bit. I will also give you an overview of the head-up display in the end, where you can see when assists are interfering or helping you out, among other things. This guide is tailored more towards beginners and newcomers to the Forza franchise or even racing games in general. But you might still get some valuable information out of this if you are a returning player, since there are some changes in terms of assists and even the head-up display. One word of advice before we get started. There are people out there who would tell you to use little or no assists because that's more realistic. And while that might be true, in my opinion, racing games are about having fun and feeling comfortable driving your car around the track. So use the assist that you feel you need for your level of experience with Forza or racing games in general. And don't let anyone tell you that that is somehow wrong. And one last thing, if this video is helpful to you, please consider helping me out by hitting that subscribe button, I would massively appreciate it. But with that, let's now start by heading to the settings to the driving assists tab. You can pick from a preset of different combinations of assists at the top, which may give you a good starting point depending on your racing game experience. You can be done with that, but I would recommend taking a closer look at all the available assists in detail. So let's go through every setting so you have an idea what everything does and how you can tweak your driving experience to suit you. The footage I will show you for every assist was driven by me on a controller, which I'm neither very experienced nor comfortable with, so it will hopefully resemble beginner driving a bit more than if I was driving on my wheel. Let's start with the ideal line. It shows you the best racing line around the track and breaking points for turns. Keep this on full if you are very new to racing games. It will be blue if you can keep your foot or finger on the accelerator. The line will turn yellow if you need to lift off the throttle and orange to red if you need to brake. In the new Forza Motorsport, I found the racing line to be fairly accurate and very helpful. Unless you're very experienced, make use of the information it provides to get around the track as fast as possible. If you don't need the help of where to go to approach corners, I suggest braking only, which will not show you a racing line on straights or full speed corners. It will instead give you a reference for a braking point for each corner, which is very helpful if you don't know your braking points for each car and track combination yet. That is something more advanced players do, so I would steer clear of turning the racing line off completely in the beginning, as you will be swapping tracks and cars all the time. Don't take the braking indication of the racing line at face value though, as it is not always 100% accurate. Experiment with braking later or even earlier if you notice that you're over or undershooting a particular corner. Next up is what we've just talked about, braking. If you are completely new to racing games, there is no shame in having assisted braking turned on in the beginning. Don't take fully assisted though, as that makes for a very unpleasant experience even while racing AI in my opinion. On partially assisted, the game will help you with braking for turns, so you can focus on steering and accelerating. Once you are more comfortable with driving, or if you have played other racing games before, you can switch to the standard braking option, which is ABS on, so you can brake yourself. The ABS system basically prevents your tires from locking up because of a too high brake pressure, which would cause them to slide across the asphalt, robbing you of the ability to steer or slow down properly. So don't use ABS off as a beginner, as it will only lead to frustrating tire lockups. 
Once you are more comfortable with everything else, you can give ABS off a shot. Here you will have to be careful with how much you apply the brake, so you don't lock up your tires. You may also have to modulate your brake pressure during braking to slow down optimally. I found this to be easier on actual pedals, but there are plenty of people who manage to do that on controller as well. But as I said, as a beginner, stick to ABS on, as this will be at max marginally slower, if even that, while being way safer. The next setting is throttle. Throttle I would always set to unassisted, so you have control over how fast you are going. Not much else to say here. For steering, total beginners can start with partially assisted. The game will help you out by steering a little bit for you. It especially helps to counter steer if you are starting to lose control of your car. Again, don't take fully assisted as that will take over the steering completely for you and what else are you gonna do then? Even partially assisted can feel weird though, so consider carefully if you actually want that. Otherwise, I would recommend normal, where the game will not support you anymore and you are in full control of where you're going. Simulation I would steer clear of until you are way more experienced as that can make controlling your car more difficult, especially when trying to save the car while starting to lose control. If you are using a steering wheel, you can consider using simulation right from the start, but it is not necessary in my opinion. The subsetting for pit stops I would set to on, so you have control of whether your car goes to the pit lane or not. You will mostly not need to do pit stops in the beginning anyway. Next up is traction control, which can be very important. Traction control helps prevent wheel spin during acceleration, helping you to not spin your car while pushing down the throttle. It basically limits the power provided to the wheels on acceleration if the car notices a loss of traction, so the tires don't lose grip with the road surface, which can make you lose control completely. You should leave this at on in the beginning. Once you feel more comfortable, you can go to Sport to have less power restriction on acceleration, which will in turn lose you less time. Only once you are a lot more experienced, you should give traction control off a go, as you will have to have very good throttle control, especially in higher power rear-wheel drive cars. But you will notice that you already have to develop that skill even with traction control at Sport, as too much power can already be dangerous at that setting depending on the car you are in. Then we get to stability control. Stability control applies corrective forces to the individual wheels trying to help you not lose control of your car. Contrary to traction control, this also works while you are off the throttle. It can be left at on in the beginning, but I would try to switch to sport and eventually off once you get more comfortable with the driving, as it can really limit your car control and slows you down as well. But it can help in the beginning, as your inputs may still be a little erratic from time to time, which can unsettle some cars easily, which is where stability control kicks in and helps you to not lose control. The last setting is the transmission you use. Automatic handles gear changes for you, while manual allows you to control gears yourself, giving you more control over your car's behavior. You can definitely leave it on automatic for quite a while. Just getting used to all the other driving techniques will keep you busy for quite some time. It is however advisable that you try out manual at some point, as this gives you way more control on how your car behaves under braking and throttle, and also lets you gauge the speed in different corners by choosing the same gear all the time. It can be a bit of a learning curve for sure, but for racing games like Forza Motorsport, I think it is definitely worth giving it a shot at some point when you feel more comfortable with driving automatic. When you try it out for the first time, be careful though that you don't downshift too early as that can damage the engine if you are driving with damage enabled. And that is all the assists in Forza Motorsport. So my recommendation for a total beginner to racing games is this set of assists.
If you have played other racing games before, you can already set braking to ABS on and steering to normal. I would change those settings in this order based on your level of expertise. Braking to ABS on and steering to normal if you haven't done so already. Stability control to sport and then off. Racing line to braking only. Traction control to sport. And finally, transmission to manual. If you have reached this point, you are already well underway to becoming a good Forza Motorsport racing driver. If at any point you are having trouble with a new, maybe more powerful car, don't be hesitant to switch on any assists again, which you might have turned off already. Driving assists are there to help you out and not to make your life difficult. Alright, to finish this video off, let's take a quick look at the elements shown on screen while driving, also known as the head-up display or HUD for short. There is quite some information displayed here and some of it also relates to the driving assists you use. Starting in the top left corner, you can see one element that is not activated by default in single player, which is the relative times in table form. You can activate that in the Gameplay and HUD options, where it is known as Mini Leaderboard. It shows you how far the cars behind and in front of you are away in seconds, as well as the gap to the leader of the race. Next to that, you can see your current lap time and your best lap so far. In the top right, you can see the current lap you are on, so you know how long of a race you still have ahead. You can also see your car level and experience, which you will need to upgrade your car between races. It also shows you a segment score for almost every corner, grading you on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 meaning that you took the corner perfectly in the game's eyes. While learning a track, this might be helpful to you to know where you can still make improvements to your racing line or the speed at which you take a particular section. Moving to the bottom left, you can see your track map with your car being shown as an arrow and your opponents as circles. The solid line through the track is the start-finish line. In the bottom right, you'll find your speedometer showing you both current speed, gear and revs. If you are on a manual transmission, keep an eye on the red line on the rev meter because this is where you typically want to shift up. Inside the speedometer you can find two bars. The blue one indicates your current throttle input level, while the red one does the same for your braking input. This can be helpful for checking if you need to adjust dead zones for your controller triggers or pedal set. It also can be helpful if you want to figure out if you are applying too much brake or throttle in a certain section of the track. Also inside the speedometer are indicators for traction control, ABS and stability control. These icons will light up if any assist is currently active, hopefully helping you out in the process. Take note of how much they activate, as too much activation can mean that you are overdriving the car and need to take it down a notch. The two segments to the left of the speedometer will only be visible if you are on the expert rule set or in multiplayer. The car silhouette shows if any part of your car sustained damage. The tires will also be colored blue if they are too cold and turn yellow to red if they get too hot. The little bars besides the tires indicate the wear on your tires. So be on the lookout to pit and exchange them before the bar completely depletes. Left of the car silhouette you can find your fuel gauge, showing your current fuel level as well as the estimated remaining laps before you need to refuel. I hope I was able to show you something new today and that you have a better idea on how you want to set up your driving assists now and in the future. If this was helpful to you, I would massively appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel to not miss any new Forza Motorsport content on the channel. I've been HD Racing. Thanks for watching.